Hey everybody, Derek here, here to bring you another video for Fear the Walking Dead. And this video is going to be doing a uh, reaction video and predictions video uh, based on the trailer that was released today. Not only did we get the Walking Dead trailer, but we also got the Fear the Walking Dead trailer. So we got a two-for-one deal here. Um, it's definitely very exciting, and uh, I'm going to be reviewing the trailer. So just in case you guys have not seen the trailer, if you don't want to see anything about it, don't want to hear anything about it, um, you may not want to watch this video because it may contain spoilers. Okay, so Walking Dead trailer it was really focusing more about, you know, the uh, harsh conditions that the community of Alexandria is facing, whereas in this video, you know, for Fear the Walking Dead, this is all just beginning. Um, you know, this is everyday life going on um, before, you know, the world, civilized world as we know it comes to an end. Um, you know, it starts out very regular. You know, the trailer involves, you know, Travis and Madison together and the daughter, uh, Madison's daughter, Alicia, um, you know, is in the shower, um, you know, and Madison barges in and, uh, you know, she's wrapped in a towel and like, mom, get out, you know. Um, Travis says that he fixed the uh, sink and he kisses Madison. Um, you know, it seems to be a very, you know, overall typical everyday family uh, experience. Um, we also get to get the first look at exactly some of the relationships that some of these characters have. Um, as we know, based on the descriptions, um, Travis is divorced. Um, he had a wife, uh, Liza, who's now his ex-wife, and he has a son with her named Chris. And Chris uh, is obviously not very happy about the divorce, and we can see that in the video because what happens is, is his father, you know, says, hey, you know, I'm really looking forward to seeing you, you know, Chris is supposed to visit him, and Chris doesn't want to see him, you know, um, he's definitely not very happy, and, uh, you know, Travis tells Chris, he says, you know, we're all building a family here, all of us, you know, Travis, in a sense, wants to, you know, he, he's not that kind of person who wants to abandon his family, you know, you get some people that when they divorce, you know, they don't have anything to do with, uh, you know, the ex-wife with the kids, you know, they pretty much abandon um, individuals. And again, that's just some people, not not labeling, um, but that is a situation that can happen. But Travis doesn't, you know, want to do that. He doesn't, um, you know, harbor anything like that. He is mostly, you know, wanting to stay um, in contact with his family. But, you know, Chris is obviously very upset about uh, what's going on. And, you know, he says, fine, force me, Dad. You know, so obviously we do have a little bit of a tense relationship there that may be explored uh, this season. Um, you know, again, so everything really starts out more like, you know, your typical drama would be. But, you know, we start to see signs of a uh, Walker zombie apocalypse coming. Um, when Madison goes into school, uh, we find out that there are several students that are absent. You know, the principal basically says, you know, that a lot of kids called off, and, uh, you know, Madison says, yeah, I got my flu shot, I'm in good shape, so, um, you have that situation going on there. Travis, uh, is a teacher, I think he might either be an English teacher or something, but he's talking about Jack London, um, you know, and he tells his students, you know, one of them's actually asleep in the class, whether that student is sick, whether they're just bored, uh, hard to say. But um, basically, uh, Travis says Jack London is trying to teach us how to die. I mean, or sorry, how not to die. Um, what is man versus nature? Uh, and then he goes on in his voiceover to say, man may offer warmth, he may offer food, but nature always wins. Um, you know, which we see. Um, you know, generally happens. You know, we as uh, people are generally controlled by what nature gives us. We really haven't found a way to stop tornadoes from happening. We haven't found ways to prevent flooding, prevent overheating. Uh, we don't have those uh, resources. We don't have things that can change the weather. Um, you know, nature as itself, um, you know, and nature being a lot of different things, but, you know, it almost seems to be like foreshadowing um, you know, during the fall of the Earth, you know, that when uh, this zombie apocalypse happens, you know, that it is going to win over. That man can try to fight it. Man can try to, you know, take precautions. But if nature wills all this to happen, then it's going to happen and nature wins. 
Um, you know, we see early signs of the uh, apocalypse. Um, you know, we do know that there's at least some kind of a virus going around. Um, you know, that was clear from the teasers. Uh, obviously, something is going around, and it is airborne um, because we know that individuals when they breathe it in or, you know, somehow when they came in contact with it, they become infected with it. So, um, Nick, uh, the character who is Madison's son, um, and which we know is a drug addict, um, unfortunately, uh, it turns out that, you know, that teaser when he was running away, um, he was actually inside an abandoned church. It wasn't a house. Um, because when you look inside, you can see the pews, you can see the glass, um, the stained glass is basically put in um, picture form of like uh, things that happened in the Bible. Um, you see various different candle fixtures. So you know that it's a church, um, but it's since become some kind of a drug house, you know, where individuals, you know, will gather to do drugs. Um, and Nick wakes up and basically looks around and he actually sees uh, a woman who is biting somebody, basically eating them. Um, and you see another guy whose neck is bitten. So obviously this is really freaking Nick out. Now, whether he realizes that, you know, this is, um, you know, real or whether he's dreaming, I mean, it's hard to say, but, you know, he does try to fight against them. And the walkers themselves, the people that, you know, come back as like zombies, um, you know, they really look very normal except for, you know, they might have a bite mark, they might have blood on them, and their eyes are gray, you know, faded over um, and grayish, you know, no color to them. So that's really the the way that the walkers are looking. They're not even, you know, decaying really. So this is a different kind of walker that we're seeing, you know, and it's definitely interesting to get that perspective because it's even scarier in a sense because you might be walking down the street and somebody else might be walking near you and you may not realize that they're a walker. So this could definitely be big. But Nick ends up running out of the out of the church after experiencing this. He probably tries to fight some of them off. There's one that has a knife in her, like near her heart. So maybe Nick stabbed her, and you know, obviously because it's a walker and you didn't get it in the head, it doesn't die. Um, when Nick runs outside, he gets run over by a truck, uh, and he goes to the hospital. He wakes up his, uh, you know, Madison, uh, Travis, and Alicia, uh, his sister. You know, they all come to the hospital to see him, and he's saying, you know, what happened? He's like, everyone was dead. Um, you know, all this was happening, but they all just dismiss him. You know, they just think that because he was high, he was seeing things, he was hallucinating. Um, they don't believe him. Uh, but then you start to see that there's more going on here. Um, if you remember that teaser that uh, Fear the Walking Dead released with the student in the uh, guidance counselor's office with Madison, you see him, you know, mumble, and he, you see that scene, and they kind of expand on it a little bit. He mumbles, you know, that people are safer in numbers, um, that they don't know what it is, but it's spreading. Um, and you later see that Travis and Madison are driving around. You see the missing posters. You see, um, like, something that looks like a walker in a cemetery walking. So they're taking a lot of the, t the teasers and putting them into the trailer. Um, later on, though, they're driving around somewhere at night, and they come upon a traffic jam, and uh, you see basically, uh, you know, a helicopter flying overhead, a police motorcycle just, you know, blows right by them, you know, almost takes out the door, um, and, you know, they hear a gunshot, they're wondering what's going on. So you're seeing that, like, there are these separate in incidents that are going on, and really, you know, people are probably shocked right now. You know, you're seeing... Uh, people that are, you know, you think are dead or that were declared dead, um, all of a sudden biting people. And um, you see a video of this. Like, they literally take a video of some guy who bites um, an EMT worker, gets up, and then the cops shoot him. But, of course, they shoot him in the uh, body, not the head. Um, and the guy gets up, uh, which, you know, which would indicate he's a zombie, and that is what's going to happen. So it's definitely showing, like, a different kind of... Um, you know, perception of the world, and it's definitely very interesting, and I'm intrigued, you know, because it's it's nice to see, you know, what people were thinking, what people were doing um, before everything happened, you know, because as we know, Rick woke up several weeks uh, after this all happened, so really, he, you know, we missed a lot of this, uh, these latest developments, you know, or the, well, the early, you know, uh, days of the apocalypse, when things were really terrible. Uh, and I'm very interested to see what they are going to, 
you know, show uh, in this Fear the Walking Dead, you know, prequel companion series kind of thing. Um, you know, we see that people are watching this video and Alicia's watching it. She goes, oh, it has to be fake. This can't be real. You know, people trying to, you know, deny that things like this are really happening. Now, later, um, you know, is when things really start to get bad. Um, I'm assuming that there's probably more people that are dying, um, more walkers that are walking around, you know, biting people, causing chaos. Um, perhaps that martial law has been declared. Um, you know, similar situations going on. Maybe the power goes out. And when things like that happen, unfortunately, you know, people panic. You know, they really freak out. Um, and you see an image where... Um, Travis, Liza, and Chris are together. Um, so these individuals are going to start out, you know, separated. It's almost like Travis, Liza, and Chris are in one area. They're in town, you know, maybe, um, you know, they met to, you know, allow Travis to pick up his son. And, uh, you know, basically things start to go chaotic. You know, you see that, um, you know, people are starting to get all riled up. They're, um, you know, in a sense, maybe rioting. Um, you know, and this could be because of the things going on. It could be the power went out. It could be that there's no food, there's no water. Things may have shut down and people are freaking out. And that's, you know, a very unfortunate, um, you know, side effect of disaster. You know, things like that do happen. You know, when a disaster is coming, you know, and there's no law, there's nobody there that can really uh, be there for you, um, or that they're dealing with something else. You know, you go and you loot, you do things like that. Some people do that. Um, and I think that's what's going on. Um, and you have riot police out there that are, like, trying to control the situation. Um, you know, they tr they shoot another person who is a walker. Um, and basically, Travis, Chris, and Liza, they take shelter inside of this barber shop, which um, is run by a man named Daniel, or uh, Daniel, Daniel, something like that. Um, he uh, and some members of his family, and I'm assuming that Ophelia is one of them, um, they do talk about two characters named Daniel and Ophelia being introduced, and I think that this is them. And there were other individuals in there, so I'm assuming that they also are a family as well. Um, and you also see Madison, Alicia, and um, Nick are together. And maybe, um, you know, Alicia's boyfriend, Mark, uh, who is also confirmed to be a character, might be there as well. Or we may be getting, you know, introduced to him later. I don't know. I saw a couple of different people. Uh, that I didn't really recognize, so we may see them later on down the road. Um, and as things start to get dark, you know, uh, Travis, uh, you know, is able to get the group that they have um, inside of the truck, and they uh, start to drive away, and you just see all this chaos going on. You see, like, uh, walkers biting people, biting a, biting a cop. You see the cops uh, shooting a walker, you know, think, it's basically things are getting out of control and they really don't know how to deal with it. Plus, you also have the issue of maybe they don't realize when they kill somebody they're coming back as a walker if they don't get shot in the head. So um, there's really a lot going on uh, and it's really chaotic and that's what I really like to see, um, you know, in this trailer. Uh, we also have, um, you know, Madison realizing that things are getting worse. You know, you see uh, her starting to see that there are walkers outside, um, and, you know, I think that they're starting to prepare for the worst. Um, you see a couple of other scenes going on as well here. Um, you see a scene where Nick is driving a truck. Um, you know that walker, that very first teaser um, promo where there's a walker that's walking down kind of like this tunnel-looking area? Well, Nick is driving a truck and seems to run into it. Now, whether this happens before he goes to the hospital or after, I'm not sure. But, um, you know, basically, he runs over somebody and Madison is there uh, hugging and comforting him. So, you know, maybe uh, it was a person. Maybe it was a walker. Maybe, it, you know, maybe they don't really know. But, you know, maybe that might have possibly made him go and get high again. You know, that may be the storyline of events there. Um, you also see, you know, a couple a couple of uh, walker incidents. Travis um, is attacked by a walker inside what looks like the house, and Madison is holding a gun on the walker, you know, to you know potentially shoot it. And then you also see that same boy at the uh, who was in the guidance counselor's office with Madison. Um, he and Madison take this 
food cart and start to push it down the hallway. So there may be a chance that they may be going back to the school to get food supplies in order to, you know, hold down the fort um, to see if maybe this thing blows over and everything will be okay. Um, and I really think the principal actually becomes a walker at 1.2 because you see um, somebody in a white shirt with blood on their um, uh, on the shirt. And the individual uh, did appear to be an African-American um, that was walking towards them. And I think it was the principal because he was wearing that white shirt. And you could see kind of the back of the head where the hair was short. And it was the same style as the principal. So I think there's a good chance that when they go back, they'll find that the principal is there as a walker. And I think that he attacks that boy. Um, and Madison, you know, attacks um, the walker with a fire extinguisher, probably killing him. Um, you know, I don't really know who this boy is. Um, I've tried looking it up. I have not found him. I don't know who the actor is. I don't know what he's about. So hopefully we may get a little bit of development there. You know, I don't know if he's going to, you know, die in that attack, if he's going to be maybe a character that becomes important, or if maybe he gets bitten and this is how the group finds out, you know, what happens when you're bitten. Um, so obviously a lot of things there. And then the last thing that you hear them say is, when civilization ends, it ends fast. Um, and I think that's really going to be a uh, theme of these first six episodes. You know, really, are we going to see all of this happening in the first episode? I don't know. Um, and I'm very curious to see exactly how many episodes this trailer encompasses, because I think it could be the whole uh, premiere, or it could be two episodes, three. Um, you know, will we be seeing lawlessness all the way through to the end of the sixth episode, or will things really go dark by the end of the first or second? I'm very interested to see um, just how fast things really become to feel almost like Walking Dead is now, you know, where there is no communication, there is no uh, police, there is nothing like that to help you, and you're on your own, and you're going to see how people react in that way. I'm very interested to see how fast it gets to that point. But I think we have a lot of things to work off of here. I think it's going to be very interesting. I was very impressed with the trailer. Um, it really seems to show that these characters are interesting. They are family members, so we're going to be seeing maybe a little bit of drama there, uh, seeing how they come together and how they're able to survive. And I think that it's going to be very, very interesting. So with that, I'm going to bring this video to a close. And I just want to thank each and every one of you for watching. If you guys have any questions, don't be afraid to leave them. Feel free to subscribe. I do have more videos coming. Um, and if you guys have any video suggestions that you would like to see, don't be afraid to suggest them. I hope you guys have a wonderful evening, and thank you very much for watching.